They say we mm. have to look mm. at each other because I don't want bad sex. <laughs> Welcome to Growing Up Latina. Um, we have a very exciting show for you. First of all, I want to thank all the subscribers, all the listeners, because you guys have been very supportive. Um, and I've been doing a lot of outreach. And so my guest on today's show, I reached out to her and she was super supportive. And she actually emailed me back and said, you know, I'm always down to help to help out a Latina that's putting in the work. But Lisa Mateo... <laughs> <laughs> you have been putting in the work, girl. I have. I have. <laughs> you really have been putting in the work. And oh. I have, like, for me, this is a very full circle moment for me um, because I grew up watching you in El Barrio. Ew. And I'm not going to lie. <laughs> But like, you're the reason why I would go to my mom and be like, mommy, the weather is today. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I would just really, because I have a heavy accent. So growing up, everyone called me Rosie Perez because they were like, oh, your voice sounds like very nasal. Um, and so I would try to like switch the accent and do the weather. And my mother would be like, is Lisa <laughs> training you? I'm like, Lisa trained me. <laughs> But um, thank you so much for coming on this show because this means a lot to me to have you on. And, you know, like I grew up listening to you, watching you and just seeing one of us yeah. on the TV screen. And girl, you were giving looks. <laughs> you black boots mm -hmm. <laughs> and just all your outfits like you were really giving us looks. Yeah. And um, and thank you for coming on. But my first question. Well, first of all, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> I am. You good. always like bubbly and I, happy. Yeah, and but I just want to thank you for 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 having this. You know, this platform to come for other women out there to come and listen to these stories because we need to hear these. We need to share these with one another um, in order to move forward. Because every now and then, you know, we're all going through different points in our lives, mm -hmm. and to hear someone say something that you can possibly relate with too. It makes you feel so much more at ease. Yes. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm not alone. So mm -hmm. this is fantastic. Thank you. You know, when when I would see you on the screen, I would I was genuinely proud. Cause I always tell people when there's one Latina, we all come through. Like the minute one goes through that door, all of us are coming. And so for me, you know, I, I felt like the minute I saw you on the screen, I said, okay, it's possible for, 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 for that space to be more of us in that space, mm -hmm. you know? Um, did you find it difficult though, like to, um, or did you have to downplay how Latina you were, <laughs> you know? Cause that's the thing. Like yeah. they always say, like, even in school for me, right. they would tell, cause I went to acting school. They would tell me like to get certain roles, turn off the accent. And mm. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but there's like no, a like, news anchor voice, like a reporter right, voice. Right, right. Did you feel like you have to put on for the camera? Not so much in local news. Um, coming in, no, I felt like I could be myself because it was local. You know, I, my parents were born in Puerto Rico. They mm -hmm. were raised here. My dad, you know, raised up in Bed-Stuy, my mom in the Bronx. And, yes. and they grew up in the city, you know. Um, and so did, I was born, you know, in Bay Ridge and, and I grew up in the city and then moved to Jersey. But so my accent was a New York accent. The only thing is when I switched from local to national news, mm -hmm. I had to switch up that New York. So instead of my cup of coffee that mm -hmm. I use, right. it's a right. cup of coffee and we're going to talk mm -hmm. over a cup of coffee. <laughs> so you had, did you have to like it, slow down your words? I did. I okay. had to, I had to actually think you know mm -hmm. as as i was saying it now it's starting to, it's become normal except the word dog i still say dog like dog. I, I can't say dog. dog it's <laughs> but like those right. little things it's that that new york accent mm -hmm. um but i never felt i had to downplay who i was and where i came from mm -hmm. what about even down to the way you dressed mm. what about that because your looks actually 
People actually spoke about your looks. They did. And it's so funny. I had this mom on Instagram whose daughter would dress like me and yes. she would post pictures like side by side. And it was the cutest thing. Um, I always felt like I wanted to be trendy, but also professional, you mm -hmm. know, and take it up to a different level, you know. So, mm -hmm. so women out there, especially Latinas, can see you can be fun, sexy, but professional at the same time. Right. And that's kind of the look that I try to portray. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about what it was like growing up for you. Like, did you always know that you this is like the job for you that you wanted to do? Oh my be gosh, no. I no? was the shy. I was so you, shy. No way you oh were shy. Oh my gosh. If it, my cousins would tell you stories. But yeah, the, every time they're like, we can't believe what you're doing. <laughs> you That's know? so funny. Because I, I was I was the oldest. Uh, I'm the oldest of four girls. Okay. Um, So I was always, you know, watching over my sisters and, you know, helping out. and mm -hmm. But I was just quiet like i was afraid to 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 let my voice be heard like um, you was an introvert yes okay and and that you know it changed of course you, when you're pushed into it mm -hmm. um but i just i started in in writing i loved mm -hmm. writing and that's oh, how my passion for nice. it started like i would write journals i would write for my school paper like writing was my passion that was the way i expressed myself since okay. i was a little bit afraid to express it vocally mm -hmm. um and from that it started to shift you know mm -hmm. i started writing my first job out of college was um, at a magazine and newspapers. And then I went to a story where it was a fire. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're there in the middle of the action and you're seeing like the flames and you're seeing all this stuff and everything going it. on. And I was like, I want to tell somebody now, you know? Right. And that's how it turned for me. That's why I was like, okay, I need to report this live. How do I do that? And I was like, TV, that's mm. how I'm going to do it. And I was like, but I, but I'm afraid. Like I can't. Right, right. So I started in, you know, as you know, a PA, as a producer, as a writer. You know, I started mm -hmm. from the bottom and made my way up to not only learn how to do things from the bottom, but also to help me build that confidence. And it was building that confidence that really helped propel me and and allow me to do what I do today. Right. It's so funny that you bring up confidence because there are times where I struggle with that. Oh yeah. And. I remember kind of Googling like, well, what are some of the things that I can do to help with confidence? Um, and I, I do have an accountability partner and I called her and I'm like, oh my God, I'm just like struggling, you know, with confidence. And it was weird because, you know, at the time I, I was on radio, but I was shy, you know, and I wanted to be these amazing things that were like on the forefront, but I was this shy girl. So whenever I would have to do a monologue or any, just anything, mm -hmm. people would ask me like, why are you so shy? But this is what you want to do. And I, I never understood it. And so my friend told me, why don't you start working out? It mm. will be an excellent way for you to kind of bring up your confidence. But you know, when you first start working out, you don't feel anything. There's no change. There's nothing. It's like, okay, I'm tired. A little sore. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> but then there's like this moment, right? Yeah. I think it's like week three of consistency for me where it's like, okay, I am not to be fucked with right now. <laughs> like, I am a badass. Yeah, like, like, I'm a yes. badass. <laughs> and, and I know like you're really big on the health and wellness. Um, and I know I'm jumping. We'll get back into the. No, no, yeah. This is very much that <laughs> show. We're just going to jump everywhere. But um. What what was it for you that really started this journey for you where you felt like, okay, I have to take this serious? Like, mm -hmm. what what was that moment? Yeah, like for me growing up, I was always um, an athlete. And like how you said, you know, mm -hmm. finding that way to like gain that confidence. Sports was that for me. Mm -hmm. You know, my father always said like, I was his only boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> With yeah, four yeah. girls, I was a tomboy. Right. Um, so sports was always a part of my life. But when I went to college, that stopped. You know, I went mm. to Rutgers and it was Division One, and I, I couldn't play, you know, any of the mm -hmm. sports there. Um, so after college, you know, I got engaged, got married, decided mm -hmm. to have kids. And at that time, you know, I just started putting on weight and putting on weight because, you know, you get comfortable, you come right. home, you sit in your chair, yeah. you start eating, yeah, talking yeah. with, you know, your fiance and your, you know. And I didn't know how, what to do because it became, it was usually so easy for me, right? you know, and right. I really had to start working at it. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. have a coach to push me, you right. know, that you didn't have that right. coach in your face, like, come on, Lisa, we need you to do it. Let's get I up. I didn't Let's have do that, it. you right. know? So I had to find it in myself to do it. Mm. And so I remember that point where 
it was just after I had my son and mm -hmm. I was sitting there and, you know, as a new mom, you are scared. You don't know what to do. I was going through a little bit of postpartum depression and I was probably about 50 pounds heavier, you know, than I am now. And it was I just... I can't even imagine that, by the way. <laughs> I can't even, yeah. like... It, it, it was tough. And I remember walking past the mirror one day and just not realizing that person. Not just from what I looked, but how I felt to you inside. Like, did you hate yeah. that person? Was it hate? Or was it just like, I don't even know who I am anymore? You know anymore? what it was? It was that. And it was... Okay. You're better than this. Mm. Like you, you know, you can do better than this because mm -hmm. it was not just for the look and everything, but but how I felt inside. Right, I right. didn't feel good, and then physically, I would you know come up from home, take my son in the car seat, and and I'd be out of breath from walking up a flight of stairs. And, right, and I was right. like, I can't do this. Like right. I want to be here for him. You know, I want to see every milestone. You know right, that they right. go through. I mean, now he's you know twenty years old and he's in the Army National Guard and, and <laughs> driving me crazy. Oh. <laughs> and I have a daughter too. But yeah. but it was that turning point for me. I found my why. I mm. found what was going to push me and motivate me to keep going. Um, and just looking at him every day and him being that reminder for me. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. So if people are there in their home and they're like, Lisa, I don't know what to do because now I coach people, you know, right, and it's right, like, right. they come to me, how do I know? I said, find that reason. You know, mm -hmm. why did you come to me? Why did you call me? You know, what, what was that reason for? There and was you something have there. to think about it mm -hmm. and put something. If it's, you know, for your family, put a picture of your family, like always, you know, have something in your family. You know, if it's yeah. for some people are just like, I just want to look good at my reunion. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Well, that's your wife. <laughs> that's your wife. Let's <laughs> right. get that dress and hang it right up in that closet so right. you see it every day. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever that reason is, mm -hmm. and it has to sometimes go deeper than just to fit in that dress. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's what you need to find and you need to just stick with it and keep reminding yourself and find that partner, like how you said, an accountability partner. Yeah. <laughs> it's No, it's hard because, and we, we actually had this conversation offline, but um, growing up for me... <laughs> My mom made the craziest. Oh, no. Yes, yes, yes. So I, this is going to sound absolutely disgusting. I absolutely love it, by the way. So mommy would make arro amarillo mm. con ensalada mm. y mayonesa. So that was what? my Caesar dressing. <laughs> that was <laughs> like, instead of Caesar dressing, we mix mayonnaise with the lettuce. <laughs> And it wasn't arugula either. It wasn't. It wasn't romaine. Iceberg. It was iceberg <laughs> lettuce with mayonnaise. Oh. And I'm like, oh my god, this is so good. But now that I'm older, I'm like, mommy, I don't think that was like the right thing to do. <laughs> and I tell people all the time, like, we drank mori soñando. Mm -hmm. We had Malta milkshakes. Malta, yeah. Mommy would put condensed milk with Malta and shake it up in the blender and be like, here. And it was banging like it was so mm -hmm. delicious but as i got older i'm like this wasn't right right so there was a lot of unlearning that mm -hmm. had to be done yeah and there's still the same ways you can enjoy those flavors well that was gonna be yeah. my question like how like yeah. we're spanish like mm -hmm. what like what is that though exactly. can you enjoy those flavors you can and like i always tell people it's in moderation okay. like if you want to have white rice that's fine you know but have some beans with it because the right. thing with white rice is that it takes out you know the fiber from it so right. if you add the beans into it that's adding the fiber back into it okay so and and it's about portion control that's the thing really because is. you know growing up it was like they pile on the plate you know Girl. i remember my abuela like come come yeah. you know like and, and you're like oh I'm full. <laughs> but you had and to it finish was it. almost disrespectful yes, if you didn't finish you your food finish your plate so it's it's unlearning that mentality of you have to finish everything on your plate. Right. That's like a hard thing that sometimes we don't even think about, you know? Right. So it's about portion control. You know, you can do things like, yes, you can make, you know, arroz con candule with brown rice, you know? Mm -hmm. You can do different things and you can substitute and try quinoa with this or that. That's great, you know? It's mm -hmm. Nutritionally, it's great. Um, but if you want to stick to the foods that you're familiar with, I always say the first step is just cut it down. Yeah. Like watch your portions. Absolutely. Like start with that first. It's baby steps. Like mm -hmm. don't jump right in, you know, hardcore right. into the brown rice and the quinoa and the, because uh -huh. it's hard, mm -hmm. you know, little by little you'll get there, but start with portion control. Do you still eat like avena, like Latina avena? <laughs> you know, I with the like in carnation the milk and the, <laughs> like, do you, cause that's our oatmeal. Like yes. we don't do a regular, yes. 
do you still i have it because my daughter loves it <laughs> yeah yeah she loves it and every time i'm like let me get a taste <laughs> um but i i kind of switch because now since i've adjusted my body like it gives me a stomach ache like all the sugar that, it makes me feel that's sick. a real thing for us yeah. too because as i've gotten older there's a lot of things mm -hmm. i can no longer eat i sure. can no longer drink um i used to be able to drink soda and, and like just pepsi or like ginger i can't do that anymore mm -hmm. I can't like I feel like it weighs me down but my bustelo is a real thing oh that's okay <laughs> yeah yeah I still and it's so funny people are like you drink your coffee black and I'm that's like right. that's the only way I drink mm -hmm. like why am I I'm not doing frappuccinos no that's not a thing for me and that's great that's the best way to have it because yeah. if you want that's the way to taste the flavor of it yes you know that's the whole point yes mm. but then also like there were a lot of things that I didn't realize, right? Because there were things in terms of like uh, just energy. I didn't have like really good energy. So one time I went to the doctor and I'm like, could you take my blood? I want to see what's going on with me. And it turned out that I had low thyroids. But that wasn't a thing for me. And it wasn't a thing in my family. And so when I had to explain to my mom that, hey, I'm on medication for the rest of my life. Like, it's like cholesterol yep. meds. Like, once you're on thyroid medications, you have to really watch it because that affects everything. It's like the DNA of your entire system. Yep. Is that something that, you know, is a thing for you? I wonder. Like, I'm not. For thyroid? No, I don't have a th you don't, thyroid. No, but. Um, she's like, girl, but I'm different good. things. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. but, like, my husband was just diagnosed with diabetes, you know, and that's yeah. like a different thing. And that's mm -hmm. huge in the Latino community, too. Absolutely. Um, so that's something that, you know, I would eat certain ways. So now we're changing the way, you know, he eats in certain ways because sometimes, you know, you go off to work and at lunchtime he's like, woo, fast food, let's go here, let's and go there. It. And that changed, you mm -hmm. know? So he's starting to bring his lunch, you know, to work from the things that we make at home. Mm -hmm. It's about making those adjustments because um, he realized too that why, like he wants to be there for his family. And right. that was a wake up call. You know, diabetes is is no joke, and it's something to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And and making those small adjustments, finding the right doctor, getting the right medication, um, it it really makes a difference in how he feels too. You Absolutely, know? just like the different energy level. You know, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it really makes a difference. And you know what's so crazy to me? Doctors for us, even growing up, it's like mommy patched things up, and that, I would bleed, and he'll be like, no, 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 we're gonna apply pressure. We're not going to, and it's like, why are we not going to the doctor? Mm -hmm. Like, why are we not health conscious? Like, there were, I felt like there was a gap mm -hmm. in the culture. Um, and I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. I'm like, was it like the healthcare system? Like, what was it? Like, why weren't we getting like, you know, checkups on a regular basis, like annual checkups? Um, and, you know, again, it's a lot of things that now that I'm older, I'm like, okay, I have to dentist annual, you know, GYN, you know, regular checkups. But my mom wasn't teaching me that. And I don't want to, because my mom is an amazing woman. So I'm not going to like just downplay her. But I just think it's also like generation, right? Yes. Like how you were raised. Sure. Um, so for you, how were you raised like in your family, your mom and your dad? Mm -hmm. How was that living situation for you? Um, Health wise, you know, my mom would cook great, but sometimes, you know, my dad was working full time. She was working part time, you know, trying to help us out. There were four of us in the house. Like, it was a little crazy. Right. Um, Did you cook, by the way? But um, like I growing? started tw toward the end because the sometimes end. Okay. they would need, you know, my mom would need help. She okay. like, it, it was easy, though. Right. She was like, girl, here's a mac and cheese. It's in a box. <laughs> like, you need to make this for your sisters. And here's some hot dogs. Right. Like, All right. It was like All right. simple, but it was an introduction for me, you know, because mm -hmm. I was still, you know, in high school. Um but yeah, health-wise growing up, I think we were pretty much health conscious. Mm -hmm. um, we always were active. You know, okay. all of my sisters were in sports, like whether it was swimming, whether it was basketball, volleyball, track. Like, I think my parents just wanted to keep us active. Right. <laughs> and out of trouble. Which, it's which, which, like, which girl, helped. just go out. <laughs> yes. I need me time. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I think you, you really hit on something is that culturally, you're right. Like sometimes that was a thing. Like, what was that, that? You know, anytime it was like throw some um, Pontevix. Yes, <laughs> Pontevix. Yes, 
totally. Like that was always the thing. And it was like, I have a headache. But the big, you know, like, and it was like, but those kind of things, like we laugh about it now, but mm-hmm. that was the mentality, you know? And and it's for us now to teach the next generation that no, you need to take care of yourself. And it's not just Absolutely. physical, like a big thing right now is is mental health. And that is Super. huge. That is something that that is a, a big, big platform for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because growing up, you know, we were told, Shh, like, don't say anything. That's right. You know, like, you don't say anything. You keep it in here. And that's it. And for me, you know, I did a whole TEDx talk about this. Yes. Um, yes. But but it's hard, you know, growing up sometimes, especially in the Latino community, you know, I was abused as a kid. Mm-hmm. And, and it's hard to to think about you know you were so so little at the time you know i was about five or six when things started happening to me and and extended till i was probably about like fourth or fifth grade Mm -hmm. um and it's and it's something that as a kid you never forget but you you put it out of your head and you don't realize how those things in the past affect how you act now you know and and it was the reason why I was so shy, why I was so quiet, why I was such an introvert, because I was scared. I never felt safe, you know, and that was so difficult. Mm -hmm. And a lot of girls out there um, have gone through the same thing, but have never said anything either, you know, and have always kept it inside. And it is so important to to come out um, and talk about it, you know, if Mm -hmm. not with your family, then go to a therapist, you know, and there is nothing wrong with that. And I know in the culture, you know, people are like, oh, therapist, you know, what, what, because I got, you know, a little pushback from mm-hmm. that. Like, what, what do you got to talk to somebody for, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but it helps so much. It and really it does. really, really helps you um, understand why some of the, the decisions that you make when you're older reflects from when you were younger. And you Absolutely. might not even realize it. You might not you, realize You know, it's so crazy. Like, because I agree with you. Like, yeah. therapy for us, it wasn't a thing. Nope. And so I have a history in my family, like my um, my grandmother's sister, mm-hmm. she passed away from Alzheimer's. And I just remember like everyone felt like she was crazy because she would always like talk to herself and she wasn't all the way there. She wouldn't remember faces and everyone passed that judgment, which is what your TEDx talk was about, yeah. judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just imagine like how that, think about it. If you have Alzheimer's, right? And someone's calling you crazy. Well, that can't make you feel any better about, you know, what's happening in your mind. And um, I I have a therapist, but my therapy looks a bit different. So I actually do hypnotherapy. Really? Yes. Okay. So for me, I don't have a problem you know, uh, kind of recognizing what the issues are, I have the opposite problem. I have a problem listening. And so I get hypnotized to kind of tap into my subconscious thoughts. Yeah, and it's been such a game changer for me. But I remember the first time, even like like recently, I actually told my family like, hey, you know, every Fridays I, I meet with my hypnotherapist and they were like, they made like such a joke about it. And it kind of like, it it kind of like stung a little bit. Like I was like, damn, like I'm doing something positive. Like I could be out here selling drugs, this, that, and I'm not. Like I'm spending my hard earned money to make sure that I'm bettering myself. And it just wasn't accepted. And that's like happening in real time. And it, I, I'm always like talking about like my sessions, like, oh, you guys can do, cause I'm always like each one teach one, but it's it's still not hitting. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. it's almost like when you're stuck in your ways, you're stuck in your ways and that's it. But I'm over here like, hey, there's something better out here. Come, everybody come through. But it doesn't hit the way it should hit. Mm-hmm. And so how do you break through that? Because now you're at a place where you have two kids, right? Mm-hmm. Mental health now is like a big thing. You know, now everybody's talking about it. Um, how do you raise your kids now that was different from the way you were raised growing up? I think a lot of it has to do with actually having conversations, mm-hmm. like actually sitting and and asking, you know, not just how was your day at school? Good. Okay, great. Can you pass, you know, the salt? You know, like, right, right, right. Like, okay, great. It's yeah. actually getting into deeper 
conversations with your kids, um, especially now. Like my mom always says, she's like, I don't know how you deal with parenting and this social media thing. It's crazy. That's real. Like it's crazy how you you have to watch everything they're doing. I mean, every time my daughter's on her phone, I'm, I get like, you know, I'm like, it's like, are you on it? TikTok? What YouTube, is it? Yeah. This, yeah. That, what, that, yeah. Who are you talking to? Like, right. who's messaging you? Like, right. you know, every growing up, it was like stranger danger, but the stranger right. danger is in their hand, like twenty four seven, and mm -hmm. it's and it's so difficult. Um, the thing that I try to do is just be open with them, mm -hmm. have conversations, talk to them about what I went through. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, you know, wasn't done in the past. You know, parents were like, this is it. This, you know, you don't need to know about, you know, what right. happened to me. You don't need to know right. about that. And and I think You're right. the kid, our children will learn so much more from hearing our stories, mm -hmm. you know? And my daughter loves hearing, you know, my stories growing up and what me and my sisters did and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And my mm -hmm. son, um, and I think that's that's the way for them to to learn what we went through, you mm -hmm. know, and to understand that when they act up, um, that there's a reason for it, right. you know, right. not just you know they're acting up and they're yelling, and they're screaming, and you're just like go to your room and call a day. Like you dismiss it. You're not right. dismissing it. You don't right. dismiss it. You talk about okay, she's upset. There's a reason for it, and there's an underlying reason, mm -hmm. and that happens so often that they'll be upset and you know really mad at me, and you know you know, yeah. and you stop and you say, okay, something else is going on, right? You tell me, you know, What's and happening? you see their faces just change, right? Like, and then it comes out, and then you hear what happened at school, and then you hear you know all that stuff right. that was built up inside of them, mm -hmm. you know? And and we didn't have that, you know, because everything was, keep it to yourself. Shh, don't say anything, you know, just, you know, just you're mad, go deal with it. But now I think having conversations is is the best, best thing that you can do with your kids now. But then it's also like, there's a boundary, right? That mm -hmm. you have to set. Sure. So my mother always told me, you know how people be like, oh, I want my kid to be my best friend. My mother's no. like, I am not your uh -uh. best friend. Uh -uh. I'm your mother. <laughs> you know, you can talk to me, yeah. but I'm your mom yes. first and always, period. Yeah. And my mom made that very clear. Like, mm -hmm. we are not, like, you have to respect me. The other day I called my mom. <sighs> oh my God. What did this you was do? actually yesterday. I said, muchacha. She's like, don't call me muchacha. <laughs> I'm your mother. And I'm like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Like, but that's like even sucking your teeth. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, I'm like, I don't know how these kids get away with like the things they're getting away with because <laughs> I would roll my eyes. Ooh. <laughs> and my mother, it was like charging at me. Yes. And I'm like, damn, I didn't even, I didn't even say it. I would be like, Ma, I didn't even say anything. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you rolled your eyes at me. So how do you create that? healthy boundary with your kids. You have to know how to put your foot down. It's so funny, I see, because my sisters and I always talk about, you know, different parenting things and stories yeah. that are going on. And the hardest thing is always you have to put your foot down because mm -hmm. if you don't, they're going to walk all over you. <laughs> like, I see sometimes, like, these kids who are snapping and disrespecting their parents out in public, and I'm like, oh, my God. And my daughter's You'd looking like, at me like, my, my daughter's <laughs> like, I would, my, my mom would get me for that one. Yeah. <laughs> like, because you have to, like, if she gets a little, like, tries to step over that mark and, you know, tries to test it, mm -hmm. and I say, uh, who are you talking to? Like, like uh, who? You, are you talking to me? Because <laughs> not me. <laughs> That's not, you, you, I'm not one of your girls. Right. Who are you talking to? <laughs> so you have to, like, set that in stone from the get. Like, mm -hmm. we will have conversations and we will talk and I am here for you. And I will right. not doubt you. I will not judge you. But... There's a respect line. Absolutely. You know, and you have to have to set that from when they're younger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it starts no, you when they're younger. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that. Then it's too late. <laughs> who who do you feel like you have, like, the easier time with? Your boy or your girl? Like, who's, Ooh, like... It's tough. I think my son was a little bit... It's different. When he was younger, he was easier as a boy. It was like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll play sports. We'll do this and that. And right. he was just very easygoing. My daughter, when she's... Now it's, like, the teen years, and it's... it's like she's testing me. 
she is testing You're me. like, girl. And this, she's a little bit harder. You know, there's emotions and then there's girl drama with clicks that, you know, that the boys don't deal with. <laughs> They're right, just right. like, whatever, we're good. You know, <laughs> so, but girls, it's different. It is different. And so, it you know, different. it's dealing with that. But now as they're older, you know, I'm getting like different, you know, issues with, you know, as they start to get older. Like my son's testing me now more with all the things that he wants to do. And I'm just like, oh. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a little different. It's different, right? Totally. So you actually in your TED Talk, you talk about um, how you missed out on certain things like family vacations. And your kids would say, oh, mommy's not here, yeah. you know, on this vacation. And I really resonated with that because mm -hmm. my mom, um, you know, we were on welfare at the time. So mm -hmm. my mom really worked and she had four kids yeah. and she was a single mom. So mm -hmm. I saw my mom, but I didn't see my mom. I didn't really get to hang out with her. Yeah. She wasn't a part of like um, huge moments, like huge milestones. Like my mom didn't go to my high school graduation. She wasn't there for my college graduation. And these were things that I'm like, oh, I wish my mom was there. Like. I always, like, I'm like, oh, it would have made just that big of a, like a, like, wow, my mom is here to see, because it's yeah. like the biggest moments of your life. And I always get kind of choked up, you know, just saying it because I'm like, damn, I wish if I had a time to just like go back in time and kind of rework my life, I would mm -hmm. insert my mom in that seat so she mm -hmm. can see me graduate. Because mm -hmm. for me, I hated college. Oh my God, for me, it was like, because there were there, there wasn't like entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial uh, subjects or acting. So I studied liberal arts for like ever until I had to select a major. And then I'm like, okay, I guess English, you know? Um, and for me, I was like, oh, I don't want to go to college. It was like a waste of my time for me. Mm -hmm. um, and my mother who has her GED, she said no. My all of my kids, you guys will all graduate college. And I'm like, why am I going to college? Like, you're forcing me to go to college and I have to pay for it? How is this fair? But I did it for her, you know? And the fact that she wasn't there, it was like, oh, I did right. this for you. Not right. for me. I didn't even, oh. you know what I mean? And um, oh, I don't know. I feel like I'm always crying on oh <laughs> these episodes. Because it's but, it's, it's hard. emotional. Like, so when you so when you spoke about that, I said, oh, my God. And it just yeah. brought me back to that time. So do you feel, because mm -hmm. you were on TV. It wasn't like you had, like, And I had, like, two five. jobs, three jobs. That's I don't even insane. know how many jobs I had. Because I was hustling. It was the beginning of my career. Like, I, I wanted to do so much and, and provide right. for, you know, I was the main provider for my family. And I wanted right. to, you know, do all these things. And. And the story that you're talking about is, you know, my daughter was in pre-K and it's, and it's yeah. you know, when you, you don't know how to write yet and she's just learning. So they draw pictures and, and the teacher writes on the bottom what they want to say, you mm -hmm. know. So she drew this beautiful airplane and at the bottom, you know, the teacher wrote something. And I look at it, I'm like, oh, look at this picture. And it says, you know, my family's on vacation. My mommy is not here because she had to work. And there are three smiling faces in the window of the airplane and I'm not one of them. <laughs> and it just broke my heart. But what it, it did help me do is it helped me to realize to set boundaries, which is something that we have to learn to do too. Right. Because I was, at the time, I mean, I was working for PIX11 at the time, mm -hmm. early in the morning, you know, starting at 4 a.m. Then at the same time, I was going back to school for meteorology. <laughs> oh my God. And I was working a show, Celebrity Tastemakers, all at the same time. And some days, like, I wouldn't get home till like eight, nine o'clock at night and then have right. to come home just to wake up at two o'clock the next morning. And and it was wow. crazy. So I learned to kind of start setting some boundaries and, and, you know, setting, you know, hey, this is my cutoff time. Like, we got to be done by here, wrapped right. up by here. Um, and started doing things like that because that broke me. Like, that was so yeah. hurtful. Um and she's just a little kid. She doesn't know. Right, you know, she's right. just, that's just what she knows, you right. know? And um, and that's when things started to change. I started to just set those boundaries. It's hard to do, but we got to learn. That's what I'm saying. The word I no. feel like it's hard. <laughs> the word no. It's a simple word, but so hard to say. I always feel like FOMO, right? Like mm -hmm. if I say no, is someone going to take my spot? Yes. Is someone going to like, is it going to be someone? What other female? You know what I mean? Like, 
Because that's like a real thing. So for you, it's like one no you say on TV is an opportunity for someone else's yes to come in. Mm hmm. It happens all the time. And it's it like all the, time. the pressure. It's like, how do you choose between your family and your career? Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's a hard. It's a hard balancing act. Um, but I learned to do it. And I learned to give and take and sit there and say, okay, I'm doing these three different things. There are three really hard things. Something's got to give, you know? And that's when I started to say, okay, I really love doing news and features. So, you know, I'm going to take a step back from meteorology, mm -hmm. you know, and see if I can just focus now on, you know, the show and news and, and see if that works. Right. And it was a game changer, like mm. in just my, my mental state. For like, sure. You know, I mean, for sure. studying for finals and going through all this and it was a lot. Um, so having that, that break and making that decision, it was tough, but, um, but it was one of the best decisions. So then were you like someone that kind of, I wonder now, because mm -hmm. you're on TV. So I'm like, were you someone that benefited off of the pandemic and staying home? Or were you like out in the forefront of it oh, all? Oh, you know what? It kind of worked out for me. Um, okay. Because after PIX11, I went over to CBS and I worked on the national side. Mm -hmm. And right before the pandemic hit, like there were certain changes going on there too. But I was also working because I like to work a lot of jobs. <laughs> also working for iHeart. I know. I was oh working for God. CBS and I was working for iHeart because I wanted to try radio. Right. So I was doing both at the same time and oh juggling my both. God. And so, you know, it was freelance. So it's like, you're here at CBS and you're here at iHeart one day, you know, back and forth. And so um, I really started enjoying radio. But at the time, CBS was changing. So, you know, they were saying, you know, we might have some changes coming up. And I was like, great, iHeart's, you know, offering me this full-time position. Mm -hmm. So... I think I'm going to take it. And they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We didn't say we want you to go. Right, right. <laughs> like, like, we have radio here if you want to try it out here. And I was like, oh, I didn't think about that. And it wound up being a, a better opportunity. Mm -hmm. And COVID hit at that time. So I was able to report on the radio live from home while my Amazing. daughter was home from school. So everything, like the universe somehow just shifted for me and and it just became an amazing opportunity. And then just as things started clearing up and people started going back to work and back to the city and things like that, that's when I got a call from um, Bloomberg. And mm -hmm. they were like, hey, we need someone full-time. Do you want to come back to the city? And I was like, I'm ready. You know, really? daughter's back in school, everything, you know. Yeah. And now she's older. And now so she's she older, yeah. yeah. So, so it just worked. But you know what's so powerful about that story? She had an opportunity to really see you at work. She did. She did. Which is really good, <laughs> right? Because once you see like an example of something, you're like, yeah. oh, mm -hmm. my mom really worked. Yeah. So I'm sure I would love to have her on too. Like, <laughs> oh my God, how is that? Right. Um, but you were a part of like some of the most um, monumental stories. Mm -hmm. So this month, um, marks this month september marks mm -hmm. um five years that hurricane maria hit puerto rico and that was like a huge devastation for puerto rico i don't think puerto rico has ever seen anything like that ever um and you actually spoke to someone and that girl when i heard that i got choked up mm -hmm. because you're now speaking to someone who's saying, this is, I'm here. Yeah. I'm not leaving. How was that <clears throat> moment for you? It was, oh, I remember after the hurricane hit and, um, and I kept, you know, I would go to my boss and say, hey, we need to do a follow-up. Like, sure, we were there when it happened, but we need to follow up. Like, we need to go back and, and see how everyone's doing and, you know, and it's always, you know, a fight to kind of get things, but when you have that passion inside of you to mm -hmm. to want to do something, you will do what it takes to get that's it. Right. And it was a passion I had from inside of me. You know, that's where my family comes from. That's where my roots are. Um, and so instead of just going in and saying, hey, I want to do this, you know, right. I came with a plan. Like that's I right. called the National Guard. I, I, I mean, I called the Red Cross um, and I got everything together. I made the contacts. I, I called and I figured out where we can go on certain days. And I went into my boss with a plan and I said, here it is. 
I said, I call, we can do this on this day, this on this day, this on this day. I need one, you know, photographer. That's all you can give me. That's fine. We can go out there, get this done. The work is done. I just mm -hmm. need you to say yes. Because it was, was deeper it. than a story for you. It was so much deeper. And and going there was a series, um, which became actually a half hour series that we, we filmed so much out there. Um, it was called Island in Crisis. And it was one of the most emotional things, but it was the highlight of my career so far. Wow. And and just going there during the day, filming these stories, seeing people, what they're going through, um, talking, you know, hearing their stories. I remember I was talking with this one man. He was outside. He was living in a shack that he built. Mm -hmm. And it was just a concrete slab, you mm -hmm. know, around him. And I went up to him and I said you know, why are you still, there's nothing left of your home. Yeah. You know, he's like, yeah, my family's in Florida. He was telling me a story. Um, and I said, then, then why are you still here? And mm -hmm. he's like, I built this shack right here. And it was just pieces of wood, a little cot outside of it, a cot inside of it. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is my home. He's like, I built this home. I'm going to rebuild this home with my own two hands. And I'm mm. going to be here as long as it takes to do it because this is and that oh. was such like it. It, it still oh. like it gives yeah. me chills. That is like it's oh. that passion, that pride that we have um, that just struck home. I mean, from filming, I would go back to my room and sometimes be in tears because of everything I was hearing, and just because I remember as a kid, you know, my mm. going to visit my grandparents there and going in the summertime and always looking forward to that, you know, mm -hmm. and and seeing how things had changed. But still seeing how strong they were and how they were coming together for one another yeah. was beautiful. It was. Yeah. It's, you know, it's something like I, my dad lives mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico. So when that happened, I was so fearful. Like, oh my God, like, is he going to make it? Mm -hmm. Where is he going to go? Because, you know, he also goes back and forth from PR to DR and um, he, he couldn't get out. Yeah. He couldn't get out. And he would show me videos. The water was like all the way, like he has a basement level to the, to the second floor. Sure, sure. And I'm like, he had to keep going up, up. Everything was ruined. And just for you to be, because you've done some crazy stuff, right? You've been on roller coasters, this, that. I swim then, with sharks. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but then it's like to experience something like this. Yeah. I mean, that has to hit home. It did. It did. And it was one of, my most proudest moments um because you're right i've done so many things i mean i've done traffic i've done weather i've done feature stories i've done breaking news you know there's one some days where i would be you know anchoring the news and then the next hour i would be at the circus like it's crazy you know mm -hmm. but to do a project like this that that came from inside mm -hmm. that was what what meant the most and because i knew that people needed to hear the stories because they had family members that that some, they couldn't even hear from, you yeah. know? So this was like for them, a piece of home, you know, that that piece that they can hold on to. Yeah. It was beautiful. What would you say is um, the best thing about being Latina? Oh, I think it's just, um, gosh, I think it's our passion. For sure. I think it's um, just this connection that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, the way we are able to express ourselves, um, the way we are able to come together for one another, um, I think it's just amazing. You know, for me, the only thing I'm missing is, you know, I, my parents grew up, um, you know, they were born in Puerto Rico, raised here, but we never spoke Spanish in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, it was something that they just never did. You know, I so see this all I, time. yeah, so I learned by one, I studied it, you know, mm -hmm. and that's how I learned. I learned Spanish through school, you know, mm -hmm. went through college. It was my minor in college. And from talking with my grandmother, who's the only one, right. <laughs> well, right. the only one I talked to, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and and that's something that I, I wish I, you know, I, I had more of. I wish I was fluent, you know, but to know, like, 
growing up, it was always the music. It was always the food. It was always, you know, my dad taking us, you know, to different museums around the city so we can learn about our culture. Right. You know, as a kid, you're like, come on, dad, this is boring. Like, <laughs> yeah. let's go. But yeah, I appreciate yeah. it you know, so much more now, Yeah, you know, and for me to pass that on to my kids now, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's what it's about. It's about that connection, um, the stories that you tell one another, the food, the flavor, um, all of that. I think that's what, what sets us apart, that passion and that love um, and the energy, the spark that we have. You know, sometimes you may not show it because you're shy, but inside it is it's there. there. It's that flame that's just wanting to come out. It lives it's there. You. No, and it's, <laughs> it's funny that you say that because um, a, a lot of people say that about Puerto Ricans, right? Like, you're a fake Puerto Rican because you can't speak Spanish. I'm like, no, but there was a whole method behind it because I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican, so Papi only speaks Spanish. And that's mm. the only way I communicated with my dad. But my mom would speak Spanish, but I would respond back in English. Yes. Right? But for her, it was very important for me to understand English. And going, going to school, I spoke English, right? So I lost my Spanish growing up. But then as I got older, I'm like, okay, I got to bring it back now. Um, but... I feel like so many people look at us like, well, you don't speak Spanish. You're not real Puerto Rican or Puerto Ricans are not, you're not real Spanish. I'm like, I don't know what that means. We're very real. I would get that all the time. Right? And it was so annoying. It was so, un and it's still so annoying. <laughs> yeah. It's still so annoying. And, and even people like would talk about Jayla, like she's not a real Puerto Rican. She doesn't. And I'm like, no, oh, she opened the doors for gosh. us. Yes. Yes. But why do they say that? Like, why? Like, I feel like that's, like, one of the negative, like, like the stigmas sure. with being Puerto Rican. Like, we're not really Spanish. Right. And I say, every time someone said it, you know, I'm like, you're Italian. Do you speak Italian? They're like, no. I'm like, well, wh why is it? <laughs> you're right. Why is it okay for you? It's not okay for me. Right. Like, I just, I never understood that. And that was why I studied it. Because I was just like, oh, like, people keep saying that. You know, like, they come up to me and start talking. And then, then I don't understand them. And they're like, well. How do you I not? Thought you were Puerto Rican. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's hard, oh, right? It's so hard. So do hard. you speak to your kids in Spanish? Um, not really, because not really. I don't want to teach them the wrong way, right? Right. <laughs> because I'm like Spanglish and like you know all different. So I don't. But now my daughter's starting to ask, you know, more. So now. I do with my daughter. Like right. I'll say things to her so that she can, and she like she loves it. Really, like, she just loves That's good. it because That's she's good. like she wants to learn, and she has you know friends that are Latina, and you know she sees them talking to their family. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna do this. Like, let's go. <laughs> right, right. I always feel like, listen, if you have the culture within you, it's yeah. always there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get lost at all. Like for me, my Spanish is Spanglish. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm not with the vocero, the no, you know, like yeah. vosotros, like, no, I don't know what that is, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but I go to DR and PR, I speak and I try. And that's, the, I'm just going to give my best mm -hmm. and you're going to get it. And that's it. And before I was always so hesitant, but now I'm like, no, this is, this is what it is. I'll learn for sure because you always want to learn and get better and, you know, just study it. But um, now I'm not so shy anymore. Like even with this show, I was always kind of like, oh, man, I have a show called Growing Up Latina. Are they going to like roast me because of it? And then I'm like, but I'm telling our stories mm -hmm. and there's so many of us. You know, and we deserve a platform. We deserve to be heard and to be seen. And that was like my biggest thing with this show. Like, I don't care who speaks Spanish, who doesn't speak Spanish. I don't care what your skin tone is. We are going to tell our stories, period. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's powerful in itself. Because we're all different. I mean, my daughter, blonde hair and blue eyes. I mean, really? <laughs> How did that figure. happen? It's that recessive gene. Like, my grandmother has blue eyes. Like, yeah. it, and it skips. You know, my husband's brown hair, brown eyes, too. You know? Right. And right. then all of a sudden, here comes our daughter. They're like, who is this? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. But yeah, like we're all so different, you mm -hmm. know. And and it's nice that we can make that connection, but we can't judge one another either, you know. That's right. Like we can't because sometimes I get you know feedback from 
my own people and it hurts that you know and it and it hurts and we shouldn't do that you know we shouldn't put one another down because we don't speak the language we shouldn't put one another down for different things we should help lift one another up you know if i'm saying something wrong and i'm trying my best to to work through this sentence in spanish and explain to you in spanish right. and, and i mess something up don't don't put me down for it like mm -hmm. Pick me up, help me, right? You know, help tell me. me how to say it the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of judging or doing anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's one of my pet peeves that I wish we can kind of get past. That was going to be my next yeah. question: is what would you like to see change mm -hmm. within the Latin community? Yeah, and I think it's that, um, just the 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 judgment, right? You know, to be to be more supportive and help one another because it's hard. Like the language barrier is such, even now, like I'm still like, you said, you're like, oh, whatever. Like, I'll just, I'll just say it. But I'm still like, I'm still, you struggle I, with I, it. I struggle. I struggle. And well, I get you're so the nervous. Front and you're like, <laughs> like you have a real audience. So you're like, oh man. But that's, that's one of the things um, yeah. that I wish, um, could change and it has you know there are so many people that that are supportive you know of it and right. they're like good for you for trying yeah like, you know because they're like i wouldn't try because i feel you know afraid of looking stupid but yeah i yeah. always say don't be the person that records me when i fall pick me up yes yeah like just pick me up mm -hmm. you know um what would you say is the worst thing i don't know if there's like a worst thing about being latina like who says that but like mm. what would you feel is like i guess like the most difficult Part. I think the most difficult part is kind of where we are now, getting to that next level, getting mm -hmm. to the level where we see a lot more Latinas in higher positions, mm -hmm. um, where we see us as CEOs, where we see us in these upper level positions. Um, you know, if we're in a certain, like opening that door and, and, and knocking down those doors and, and, right. and finding a way to reach those positions. I think that's, that's our struggle right now. Right. But we're starting to get there. We're breaking through. You we know, are. I do like business stories now and there's a CEO and her last name is Rodriguez. You know, I'm going to do yes. that story. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> yes, yes. because I'm proud, like, because yes. you don't, you don't see it, but you're seeing it more. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I'm looking forward to are the changes that are coming right up the line. You know, that's mm -hmm. starting to, we're starting to see that turning point. What's next for you, Lisa? Ooh, oh my gosh, I know. I feel like, like you've done it all. I think what's like, next- Like, are you ever going to relax? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sit still. No. I always tell my kids are like, Ma, just sit and watch TV. Like, I can't. I, that's just not me. Yeah. Like, I can't sit still. Um, so I've done newspapers, magazines, TV, radio, um, TED Talk. <laughs> it's you've like, done it all. I think what I want to do now is focus on um, more- um, an area of, of, of service. Mm. Um, I want to find an organization that I can work with um, that's, that helps, you know, abused girls, abused women, okay. abused boys, whoever, you know, children that are abused. I want to work with them to, to help them with these kids, you know, to, right. because I know what they've been through. You mm -hmm. know, I know some of the things, I know the feelings, the emotions, everything, a lot that's tied to it. Right. And I think, I see myself in in doing that in my next role, um, working with these organizations. Who knows? Maybe starting my own. Like it, yeah. it's, it's you never that know what amazing. can happen. Yeah. Um, but that's what I see myself doing next is that area of service because, you know, I I I put in the work. I've done so much, and now I really want to push it to another level and just yeah. say it's time for me to give back. You know, and and that's what I want to do. And you know, I'm going to join like your workout classes. Now. Yay! <laughs> I'm like, you have a member now. That's it. Um, but tell everyone where they could find you yes. on socials. Yes. On social, it's at least Mateo TV. It's on Instagram. It's on um, Facebook. <laughs> I'm on Twitter. You're um, everywhere. I'm man. not on TikTok. I'm sorry. I don't do the tickety talk. No, but I, I saw you do dances though I with do, your kids. Do, I do my yeah. Instagram reels. Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> but, um, but this has just been... Um, an incredible experience, you know, to have this platform, to have people talk about, you know, who they look up to, all those different things, all the struggles they've been through, because mm -hmm. sometimes people don't have it. I had, you know, a loving family. My dad always pushed me, you know, he yeah. was always like, you need to go to college. You need to do this. You know, Latinas need a voice. You, you're a woman, you're Latina, you, you have things against you and you need to push hard That's to right. get past that, you know, and God bless him. We lost him, you know, over a year ago unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. And, 
and I know he's with me every day. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love you, Lisa. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Hey, guys, if you like that episode of Growing Up Latina, make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you leave a comment and let us know who you would like to see on Growing Up Latina. Oh, 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 oh